Winter Olympics, Eve Molehead leads the British team to win the gold medal in women's curling, ending years of injuries. In the closing ceremony of the Beijing Olympics last night, Bruce Muat, the skip of the men's curling team, carried the GB flag. It seemed symbolic that the baton had effectively been handed over from Eve Muirhead, who had been a flag bearer in the opening ceremony 16 days earlier. For it is this pair and their curling teams to have led and carried the British team in these Winter Olympics. Many had expected Muat's crew to deliver Team GB's first gold on Saturday, however, the men who came up just short in their final were all there by the ice on Sunday morning to cheer on Muirhead and her rink as they managed to go one better and complete their gold medal triumph. It was the most emotional and comp comprehensive of victories, a 10-3 crushing of Japan with a performance that was so commanding that the Japanese skip conceded the match before the 10th and final end. As she stood atop the medal podium with the national anthem playing, Muirhead finally dissolved into tears. She has been a tower of strength not only through this Olympic campaign, but through the previous three. Muirhead was first skip of a British Olympic team when she was 19. She won a bronze in Sochi in 2014 and then had to endure the agony, for years later in Pyeongchang, of missing with her last shot and blowing the chance to win a second bronze. Ever since 2018, she has been unable to dislodge that final shot from her mind. Even here in Beijing, she has talked about how it still tortures her. Hopefully, she said with the gold medal hanging round her neck, it will be out of my mind now. If there is one single stone that she is known for, it should surely now be her final stone in the seventh end of this final. Her team had been dominating this match from their 2-0 start in the first end, yet it was the seventh that destroyed Japan. The seventh end had been masterfully played by the whole team, giving Muirhead a final shot at glory. She then delivered a raised takeout, a stone that removed the final Japanese red from the house and gave GB a four-pointer. It was perfect, Vicky Wright, her teammate, said. I was so confident watching it from the other end, I knew what it was going to do and I knew the shot was made. She absolutely smashed it. With that, Muirhead had an 8-2 lead. Japan chased it, but, here, they were playing a team who were infinitely their superiors. It seemed that all four of Muirhead's team had raised their game for this final. That ninth end became almost impossible after the final throw by Jen Dodds, a double takeout delivered with an accuracy that had become known as the hand of Dodds. Dodds, of course, had already had to come to terms with her fourth place finish in the mixed doubles with Muat. Yet standards on both men's and women's sides were raised from what had seemed a soul crushing denouement 12 days earlier. On Saturday, Muat and his men's team had been edged out by a masterful Sweden side in a high class contest that was an unrelentingly tight tactical chess match. Muirhead's victory was completely different. Japan simply could not match the high quality of the Muirhead Quartet. This is a moment I dreamed of as a young child, the British skip said afterward. To stand on the podium and get that gold medal round your neck is a moment I'll never forget. It's a moment that I've been waiting for for so many years. She and her team have certainly done it the hard way. They did not come to Beijing as one of the favorites. Indeed, they nearly didn't come at all. At the World Championships in Calgary last year, they failed to win an Olympic qualifying place, let alone a medal. That failure triggered a complete rethink, the team planning was restarted and a new team was formed. Before their final qualifying event, in the Netherlands in December, they were hit by two COVID cases. Then, when they arrived, Wright tested positive and an alternate player had to be flown out. Wright's test, however, turned out to be a false positive. Still, then, it wasn't straightforward. They were very nearly eliminated in the Netherlands, so they were not highly rated on arrival in Beijing and they certainly did not start their Olympic competition here with anything like the form that suggested they could win it. They only just scraped into the semi-final. Yet at that point they declared that they were a playoffs team, and they were right. Their resilience was tested to the limit in a high-quality semi-final against Sweden. Their best game of all, though, was the one that they left until the last. All this was watched with pride from the side of the rink by Rona Howie she of the famous Stone of Destiny in 2002. It was Howie who led a British team to their only previous curling goal. Monday marks exactly 20 years to the day, so we can almost apply the cliché of 20 years of hurt. It has certainly felt like at least a decade's pain for Muirhead. 20 years has been long enough, Howie said. Her own investment in this team has been considerable. All these curlers have grown up knowing her and being inspired by her. When Muirhead led the team to their bronze medal in 2014, Howie was her coach. Here in Beijing, Howie had graduated to the BBC commentary team. However, she herself said that it was emotional, watching her own piece of history being repeated. I've known Eve for so long, she said. She'll never stop fighting. Like we did 20 years ago, you get given that chance and my goodness you take it.